Hi, I'm Danielle. I do too much. I like hair, talking, cosplay, music, art, and stuff. Three points if I made you yawn. <laughs> I made me yawn. Hello and welcome to Star Puppy. I'm Danielle, your resident weirdo. Welcome to the weirdness. If you'd like to be part of the deluxe weirdness, you can join the people I'm about to thank. Big shout out to my patrons on Patreon <laughs> for joining the deluxe weirdness. You get all the behind the scenes and introductions to certain factors in my life. <laughs> <laughs> And I appreciate you so much. If you'd like to join the Deluxe Weirdness, click here, and I'll see you there. Thin natural hair. Fine oh, natural yeah. hair. Hair that is not, um, reminiscent of a lion's mane. Hair that is not, uh, necessarily as thick as a bowl of oatmeal. Hair that does not necessarily go, ooh, ah, 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 ah. That is to say it is down with the thickness. Like and subscribe. <laughs> My hair has uh, been very troubled in the past. I think we're on way better terms than we have ever been, but my hair uh, w was not always super floofy loofy and uh, can support a full uh, live flower, totally live for sure, for sure, for sure. My hair has been very, very thin and wispy and not fluffy. Uh, or, or even approaching like a like a normal amount of hair. And there are ways I've thickened my hair. There are ways I've grown my hair. The strands of my hair are skinny as possible. And because of that, um, I've had to learn some tips and tricks myself. My hair is like uh, collard greens. They're big and fluffy and it's a big old stalk. But once you cook it down, it's like three bites. Like... <laughs> So here are some techniques I've used and that you can totally use uh, on your head of hair to maximize floof. I personally do not use heavy products when I know I need my hair to be really, really, really floofy, especially more than once a week. So I'll be more specific. Um, I love a heavy product. Uh, things are going from summer to fall around these parts here in uh, the US. Uh, so heavy products are kind of needed right now, but if I need my hair to be super floofy, I will only use a heavy sealing product like a cream or a moisturizer or maybe even a really thick leave-in conditioner. I will only use it once that week. If I need my hair to be continuously floofy, I, I won't reapply a heavy product. Not gonna do it won't happen, won't work out. Don't use heavy products. It'll weigh your hair down. It'll stick your strands together, especially if you have fine hair like me. And uh, the floof will not be maximized. And that's hair crime. Now, this is only for use in the summer, spring, fall, like the beginning of fall. Don't do this in the winter. If you wanna keep your head of hair, you better put them heavy products on. In a similar vein, uh, you really do need to use light oils. We're talking pretty much anything but JBCO, Jamaican black castor oil, <laughs> or castor oil. <laughs> oh, I love those oils though. I personally, my favorite oil of all time is sweet almond oil, and it's a very lightweight oil. I'd say it's like a medium weight oil towards light. If like the next day you need your hair to be super fluffy, I would suggest if you have to use an oil at all, um, argan oil. It's the lightest oil uh, in my opinion and it absorbs so fast and it's a little pricey, but it's worth it. I'll link it below if you'd like. What I use oils for in my routine at all is a sealant after wash day and I use a scalp oil. So the only hair oil I use is once a week and it's sweet almond oil. If you need your hair to be extra super de duper floofy, I would suggest argan oil instead. Don't use no JBC oil on your head. Don't you do it. Don't you put no olive oil on your head if you're trying to have floofy hair. This is a short term situation, okay? I do not suggest this long term. Do you hear me? You need to have your hair fully stretched. Fully stretched. Now the reason 
I'm saying this isn't a long-term solution. It's because in order to stretch it, you gotta put some kind of stress on your hair, okay? Because when I say fully stretched, I mean fully stretched. I used to use a couple of different methods to stretch my hair. Um, if you guys have been following me for a while, this is like the waveformers, the curl formers era. I think I did banding. I think I did like, I think there's a whole video about it. If I can find it, well, I can find it. It's linked here. <laughs> now, um, part of the reason I had sparse density hair is because I was stretching my hair so often with such invasive and tension heavy methods. I do not recommend this. It is the reason I had sparse density hair. So now I use my Revlon dryer, the one with the brush attachment. I've been using it since I bought it for that video. I, d I don't use anything else. Actually, I'm kind of curious what a waveformer or curl former set would look on me now. How would that even look? Should I do it? Let me know in the comments. I only stretch my hair once a week, but I stretch mine with heat and with tension. And that sure is, a, oh man, is that an easy way to break your hair out if you overdo it? I do not suggest this more than like once. For me, a week. But if you're still dealing with uh, sparse density hair or fine hair, or both, uh, this might be like a once a month situation. Don't go ham, because then you look like a turkey. I don't know what that means, but I stand by it. Now the reason I say that is because for floofy hair, you have to separate all of your hairs. So even when my hair wasn't quite this thick or dense, I could make it kind of look like it was about this thick by just separating my hairs. So this one is probably gonna ruffle some feathers. For me, it has been a long-term solution. If you've been following the channel for like the last several months, you probably have noticed that um, I don't really style my hair anymore. <laughs> You're gonna see me in a protective style, an afro, or wash and go. And I haven't really done a wash and go in like four or five months. <laughs> So, uh, basically just been in afros this whole time, or passion twist, that's, that's what I do now. And I've noticed my hair looks fluffier and fluffier. I think maybe, uh, I have a few theories on this, either my hair is getting like trained and used to being out and like about. I've also been using better products and better technique, been giving my hair a lot of time in between, the passion twists help, but, Looking back to my braid out and twist out and grand to not out days, um, I recognize that the collard green effect kept happening. So what would happen is I do a braid out or a twist out or grand to not out. It sections off the hair in such a way that unless you have a large volume of hair, when you take those braids down or those twist downs or those grand to not down, <laughs> It's condensed your hair into larger sections. And I found um, from my many years of being natural and my many years of consuming natural hair content that when uh, with, with people with large volumes of hair take their hair down from these styles, because they have so much hair, it doesn't really matter. The density is so much that their scalp will not show. <laughs> that, that's what I'm dancing around. But with um, sparser density and finer hair, when you take those sections down, uh, that, that condensing, it takes quite a toll. And for me, you can straight up see my scalp. I don't know if that would happen now since my hair is so much denser, but something tells me yes. For a while, a long, long while, many years, I would try to find a way around this like collard green effect. And like last year, I just like gave up. And I'm like really in an okay spot about that. <laughs> 
I just wear my hair in afros and wash and goes and passion twists. These are the things I do now. I've evolved into a lazy natural. It happened, you guys. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> so like, maybe consider letting go of those styles because they're not really designed to help out the people with not a ton of hair. Now, a lot of these have been about styling, um, but really quick, I wanted to offer a long-term solution. Uh, I mean, those of you who have been on the channel for a minute, this is, this, especially here, this is some progress. And in large part, it's due to my, uh, my hair growth oil. And I'll link it right here, the video. But um, that, I've used this long term uh, for what, like two years now, I guess. Um, and I, I cannot, I can't emphasize enough how much I appreciate how much this has come in and how much is still growing and how long my hair has gotten and how much more density I've achieved. Um, it's still fine. So it'll always boil down collar green style, but I mean, maximizing floof is about also maximizing hairs, like the number of hairs on your head. And my uh, growth oil not only helped me grow my hair and retain the hair on my head, um, it also like awakened follicles that were like hurt or dormant um, or just had like hair broken down to the scalp. It really helped fortify the hairs that were growing and would grow and like invigorate certain follicles to wake up and throw out a hair, dang. So that's that on that. That's a long-term solution. You have to really commit to that. You have to use it like every week. I use it every other day. Like if you really, really wanna see long-term results instead of short-term solutions, you have to do things consistently. Um, <laughs> if you wanna have healthy hair, you gotta do healthy things consistently. Nappy Food TV, everybody. <laughs> and another thing, don't be afraid of this pick. Picks are the one. Picks are like genuinely designed for our hair. And if you must style and braid outs or twist outs and it doesn't like affect your hair's density, stuff like that, like you have a decent amount of volume still, uh, don't, don't be afraid to hit those roots with that pick. Hit them, hit them hard. Mama said, knock you out, hit them hard. I don't know if you forgot about your pick or like you've never used one, but like go and get one or go and grab yours. I'd say, like that's a last step in styling your hair and trying to get that last couple of inches, maybe one, but you know, an inch of hair makes a big difference. But make sure that you're really gentle with your roots because you know, that's the beginning of your hair. You wanna be happy, you want you want to grow well. Okay, if you have anything but an afro, this is a twist out, this is a braid out, this is a braid out, this is a wash and go, hey. <laughs> Section your hair loosely at night with um, with ribbon ties. Here's my sectioning strategy. I do a big fluffy, like giant section, like basically from the tips of my eyebrows all the way in like a circular pattern It's the front of my hair. I section a huge section on the top from about, it's not your temples, it's like two steps beyond the temples. Section that crown, then I section a temple section, a temple section, an upper temple section, an upper temple section, a super back section, and off back sections. Because if you, okay, remember pineappling? Remember how pineappling doesn't work if you have low density hair, <laughs> fine hair too? Me too. So <laughs> what you have to do is find the in-between of large sections so your hair doesn't get compacted, but also strategically placed sections so your hair still has a shape. What I've noticed is with lower density hair, with fine hair, your hair is very impressionable. Literally, it will stay in the shape that you put it in that night, and then it's actually very difficult to coax it back into a cohesive style and especially keep the texture that you assigned it with. 
Ugh. So yeah, I use my technique. And then you put a bonnet on top of it. More specifically about the bonnet, you need to have a large bonnet because your hair needs room to stay fluffy. If you have a small bonnet, it's going to compact your hair all night. And that's, you're losing fluffitude you could have used for your nice date or wherever you're going. These are not long-term solutions. These are short-term solutions. And uh, one of them is low-key, high-key, inevitable if you live in the South. Avoid humidity. I mean, you can do your best, but when you live in the South like me, there's only really so much you can do. You can stay inside and then run to your car and then run inside wherever you're going. I have done that and I will do that again. And then the other, I do not recommend anything other than short term, avoid sweating because your hair will, um, it'll shrink. And uh, that is the opposite of volume now, isn't it? Especially if your hair shrinks 80% like mine does. That's it. Thank you for all my Patreon support. You guys are lovely. If you'd like to be in the credits like these lovely people, the Starry Spaniel tier is the one for you. The link is in the description to join the Deluxe Weirdness, AKA Patreon. I upload content like this on Tuesdays. If you'd like to join me, go ahead and subscribe, turn on bell notifications so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you guys next time. This has been me, Danielle, your resident weirdo, Star Puppy signing out. Say it with me now, Star Puppy. Away! <laughs> Don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you enjoyed the video.